Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining this webinar today. Um, I wondered if all of you, some of you could quickly raise your hands just so I can check that you can hear us. Ah, amazing. I can see some hands coming through. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm Alison Payton. I'm the Vantage Marketing Manager, and I'm the one who kept emailing you um, to remind you about today and to remind you to submit questions. So thank you all very much for joining us. The purpose of today's webinar is for you to have the opportunity to hear directly from Jermaine um, and Tara from the graduate recruitment team at Travis Smith. Um, many of you have submitted questions in advance, which we're going to go through in a few moments, and there may be an opportunity at the end of the webinar to answer additional questions. So if you do have a really burning question or from something that's come up during the webinar, please do submit it, but apologies in advance if we, we don't have time to answer that, but there will be an opportunity. I'll explain more at the end about how you can have that question answered. So firstly, um, welcome to Jermaine and Tara from the Travis Smith Thank Graduate Team. Um, I wonder if you wanted to start by um, maybe introducing yourselves and saying a little bit about the firm and the opportunities that you offer to kind of students and graduates. So, um, Jermaine, would you like to start? Yes, I will. Hello, everyone. Thank you for um, joining in today. Um, uh, my name is Jermaine Van Gaisel, and I'm the Graduate Recruitment Manager. Um, I've been the Graduate Recruitment Manager for about 19 years now. I know, it's a long time. Um, just a bit of feel about the firm. Um, we're basically a city firm and we're based between St Paul's and Farringdon um, by Smithville Market. Um, the firm obviously has grown a lot from the 19 years and more recently, well last few years, we've grown from about 300 to 600 people, um, but we've never merged. Uh, the culture of the firm has remained the same. It's a very collaborative and inclusive firm. Um, we're quite rare in the city, we have no chargeable hour targets um, and we build this sort of breezer culture which encourages people to help and it's help for, accept help um, from others without the pressure or looming targets. Um, it's a very relatively small intake, um, we have high quality work and it's a very friendly and supportive environment, there is basically no hierarchy everyone is valued and appreciated for their contribution whether you work in the general office or hospitality or you're a senior associate or partner and um, technology has changed our world a lot um for example when i joined there was the application process used to be handwritten cv and cover letter so um general office would bring up bags of post um on first post of july years ago this has obviously moved to like online applications now Still very similar, but just online. So just a straightforward application, CV and cover letter. Um, we still do face-to-face -face interviews. We don't have any assessment days, no psychometric days, just straight interviews. And Tara will explain a bit more about that later. Um, we are looking for um, applicants who, you know, intelligent, articulate candidates for more backgrounds. We want people that want to be challenged and stretched um, people will embrace our culture and want to become part of it. Um, we're always looking to recruit for the long term, which is why our part interviews are always sort of partner-led. We're looking for partners for the future. And we do feel with our high retention rate, low associate churn, we have one of the lowest in the city. And actually half our partners train, over half our partners train at the firm. We feel like we're sort of getting it right. Um, we also have one of the youngest partnerships in the top 100 UK firm. So we feel that sort of reflects in our progressive approach to business, how we train, develop and support our people. Um, people often ask about our international offices. We don't actually have any offices apart from a three-man team in Paris in a little wee space. Um, we tend to use best friends approach, which is a network of international law firms that we work with. And although we don't have the international officers over half our work is international so i think that's a little overview i could go on for ages but um i think i'll hand over to tara now because i do i'm aware of the time uh tara do you want to take over thanks jermaine 
So, hi, my name is Tara Davidson. I'm the Graduate Recruitment Administrator. I joined Travis Smith in January 2019 after finishing my master's degree from the University of Sheffield in September 2018. So slightly newer than Jermaine. I definitely don't know as much, but I'm, I'm getting there. Um, so I was just going to talk a, a little bit about the opportunities we offer students and graduates um, just briefly, because uh, I know a few of you asked about that. So we offer four vacation schemes a year, three in the summer and one just before Christmas. Uh, we also offer direct applications to our training contracts. We hold lots of events at our offices, including open days, you know, experience days um, in collaboration with university societies, as well as events with brands such as Rare, Legal Cheek, My G Works and many others. Um, if you follow these brands um, and others such as Law Careers Net, um, on their social media pages, you can find out about these events and, and register to attend. So definitely recommend doing that. In addition, we'll also advertise some of these on our Instagram page. So follow us and, and keep up to date with everything that goes on at Travis Smith. Um, we did have a few more general questions about our training contracts. So I just wanted to whiz over those briefly. Hopefully it's some useful information. The, the trainees do four seats, two are compulsory and must be a corporate seat and a contentious seat so either disputes resolution or employment the trainees get a choice um, out of our other specialist departments for the other two seats so if you you can find all those departments on our website if you're interested we do clients comments but these are on an as needed basis and are on an associate and nq level um, so they're not included in the training contract tara just to Pass in, sorry, but just so that people understand, the reason we don't do clients to comments is because basically trainees, I know we, they only do four seats, and we feel if we send someone out on a client to comment, they're not going to get a view of the work that they would in the London or in our office. So when it comes to qualification, it's harder for them to know what the actual department is doing at, at our office if they're away. So that's one of the reasons. We keep it for um, NQ levels for the comments. Sorry, yeah. back to you. No, no, that's great. Thanks, Jermaine, for that clarification. So, um, some of you also asked why our training contract stands out, and I would say primarily this is because of the number of trainees we take on. So, um, it's a small intake of 25 a year. In addition to this, um, the way you learn is also really valuable. So you sit in a room with a partner and other associates at different levels. So you sort of learn via osmosis, um, which is super valuable. And you also get specific departmental training on top of that. An exceptional point to note is that, as Jermaine mentioned, there are no targets for chargeable hours. So this really emphasizes the quality of the work that you're doing rather than the quantity. Um, and as well as that, it means that the firm really values um, each individual taking part in firm initiatives and events. So, for example, pro bono, CSR projects, grad recruitment events, all our trainees um, are really keen to get involved in our events. And, for example, you know, um, our vacation schemes are run by a lot of our trainees. So um, that's really great as well. The culture at Travis Smith, as Jermaine said, is sort of one of collaboration and teamwork. Genuinely, everyone's really happy to help each other and all departments work together to get the best outcome for the clients. So, um, yeah, that's what makes us unique and why our training contract stands out, really. Um, so just to hand back to Alison, really, to get started with the questions. Great. Thank you both very much um, and for answering well, some of the, the questions there about the comments and seats. So um, on to the rest of the questions. So thank you all. Um, for, to, for those of you that submitted, some of you submitted several questions, which is great. Um, some were quite similar, so we tried to group them together into questions related to the situation at the moment, um, questions about the application process to Travis Smith, and then some more sort of general application questions that can, can apply um, to a number of firms. There were also a few questions that were quite specialist, um, either kind of specialist questions about the firm or particular practice areas um, and then not questions that the graduate team graduate recruitment team can answer um, and certainly not questions I would even attempt to answer so if by the end of the webinar your question hasn't been answered um, there are two things either kind of follow up um, with Jermaine and Tara afterwards or they would be, some of them would be great questions to ask um, at Travis Smith recruitment events um, in the autumn um, but either way you know if your question hasn't been answered, then do follow up um, and we'll share the contact details at the end of the webinar. 
So let's start with a situation at the moment um, by um, Jermaine. I wondered if I could ask you a question that came up a lot and also came up in some recent webinars we did, which was, have you had to cancel any webinars? Um, I'm sorry, have you had to cancel any vacations? <laughs> any vacations <laughs> I've got this one. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, um, have you had to cancel any vacation schemes yet? And what would your advice be to students who have had their schemes maybe at other firms? Um, cancelled. Okay, um, at the moment we haven't had to cancel our schemes um, because our schemes are running from mid-June to July. I do know I've had a lot of people email because I've had their spring schemes cancelled. Um, we are hoping, fingers crossed, that everything will be back to normal by July, June. Um, so the situation is ever-changing. Um, so we're keeping up, we'll keep up to date with our back schemas by email. Um, we just don't know, we absolutely love running the back scheme, so we're really hoping they do go ahead. Um, but it's really all out of our hands at the moment. So at the moment it is business as normal, but we will let people know if we are cancelling it. Um, I think if you have got schemes that have been cancelled, I've heard some law firm very few have cancelled them and I think some of the other sectors like banking finance have cancelled theirs. I think you just have to make the best out of a bad situation. Um, I hopefully, you sh I mean, I think if we were cancelling it, we would just try and do something different. So I think firms will be offering something different if they cancel. So I would go with the offering and make the most of the opportunity. I mean, the major loss is the experience you'll have getting to know the firm, that insight while working in the office. So maybe after an experience stage, use other opportunities to visit the office and meet people at the firm. I mean, there's always law fairs and presentations, but I would say just keep in touch with the firms and just see, I mean, we definitely want to, it works both ways. We want to meet students. Um, so I would just wait, wait for now. It's quite early days. I mean, this is only week three of us being locked down. So it is early days and just keep in touch with the firms and watch them up, watch the sort of websites and um, to see what happens really. I think that's Good. all we can do. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, Tara, if you've had a vacation scheme cancelled at another firm, um, would you say that students can still include it as work experience on a training contract application form so they kind of they haven't done the scheme but they kind of want to show a firm that they managed to get a place mm. on it yeah well we completely understand that i think you know it, it's really a good idea to let people know on your applications that you have had offers like that but if it's outright cancelled, then do not put it as your work experience because you know that's it's you know that's not truthful that you've actually done that. On our application forms, there are you know there is extra space to be able to add things like that, so you can say, I got this vacation scheme. This is the you know the route that I took to be able to get this offer, um, and unfortunately it was cancelled. And this was the other thing that I did instead of that. Um, as Jamie just mentioned, there'll hopefully be other offerings if things have to be cancelled. But no, don't add it as your actual work experience, add it as an extra. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, so next question was, um, which I think is probably going to come up a lot um, in mm -hmm. with firms, is, is whether it's sort of the impact of COVID-19. Um, will it be accepted as a mitigating circumstance on a student's grades? this year? Like, will it be accepted on, on application forms or through the application process? Shall I take uh, that? Yeah, Jermaine, that's one for you. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Jermaine. Um, of course, um, if it has had a direct effect on you, definitely it should be mentioned. Um, it has to be reasonable, though. Um, for example, if you, your family, close friends weren't personally affected, and your university has made every effort to ensure the final grade is fair, then we wouldn't suggest using it. It's like you've got to be careful, it may come across as an excuse rather than mitigating. But obviously, if it has had an impact on your grades, we absolutely completely understand this and would encourage you to let us know in the mitigating circumstances of the application. Um, absolutely. Great, thank you. Um, okay. Uh Tara, one for you, I'd say. Um, will the effect of the coronavirus cause law firms to reduce 
um, the number of trainees they're going to be taking on in the next few years? So most firms are recruiting for a couple of years in the future. So we're currently recruiting for 2022. Um, therefore, what happens now is unlikely to have a knock-on effect to that far in the future. Um, so currently, no, it, it shouldn't have an effect on, on numbers or anything like that. Obviously, as we've already mentioned, things are currently changing very quickly. So we will keep everyone up to date on that. And like Jermaine said, keep an eye on the websites and, and all the places where information would be put by firms um, just to see. But, you know, if hopefully we're out of this in the, in the next couple of months, actually, it shouldn't have a knock on effect to 2022. So you should be OK. OK, great. I think that's the answer that students want to hear. Um, <laughs> OK, so. <laughs> This, um, I think this is sort of in the context of, you know, in if vacation schemes have been cancelled. So um, um, someone asked, how much legal work experience, if any, would be expected when applying for a training contract? So I think this is someone who says they've have they have a vacation scheme coming up this summer, but if it's cancelled, then they won't have any substantial legal work experience on kind of their CV or you know just talk about in a covering letter on application form so would this be taken into account because of what what's happened and why schemes have been cancelled? Um, I'm sure I'll answer that yeah I'm happy to answer that I mean obviously um, some legal work experience is always good when applying directly for training contracts but as we said um, if a vacation scheme is cancelled you know try and get something out of that um, if you can, but you know, not everyone can do legal work experience anyway. So there's plenty of um, things you can do to gain work experience. Um, that isn't a vacation scheme. It shows you're proactive, customer facing. You know, you can do attend court work if possible. You know, the, and something that shows time management, teamwork. Given the current market, that is really hard. But there's volunteering. We just want to see people being proactive but it is very hard and it is very hard to know what it'll be like in the summer but legal work experience isn't absolutely vital so just try I think and try and make something out of a bad situation but I think just to show we do look for those people's skills and that teamwork we have a lot of people that are um, you know doing volunteering at the moment and that would all reflect very well on the CV so I'd say yeah. just try and use you know, be as proactive as you can be, given how hard it is, which isn't very helpful. But yeah, I try maybe volunteering is the answer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, that's a great suggestion. Thank you. Um, okay, Tara, I'm going to come back to you um, with this question, which is, what is being done for your trainees during the lockdown? So as always our cultures sort of shone through here um which i think is really you know endearing of the firm actually teams are keeping each other updated with daily calls virtual socials are being organized jermaine is having catch-ups with all the trainees to make sure they're okay um there's departmental buddies um a buddy system in place um already so their buddies are in constant contact with them um you know we have a culture of honesty and support so we would hope that any trainee who's struggling would come forward and let us know whether that's speaking to the partner in their room an associate a fellow trainee or one of the graduate recruitment team so that we can support them in every way possible this is the exact same for all of our future trainees and basically what we're just trying to do is keep in constant contact with everyone to make sure that um if, if anything is um going wrong that they can let us know and, and we can be as supportive as possible Great. So just, you know, the same as if you were in the office, hopefully. Yes, exactly. And um, yeah, that seems to be what's happening is basically uh, as much communication as possible, really. Yeah. Great. Um, OK, so this is probably, um, I'd say, kind of a question for now, I think, with a lot of students, um, you know, at home with more time than they thought. Um, and I wonder if, Jermaine, I'm going to come to you with this one, is what um, should, could um, aspiring commercial lawyers be doing now to expand their knowledge on commercial law? Oh, I love this question. Um, <laughs> oh, this is my favourite sort of question, actually. Um, there are so many things you can be doing. Um, 
you know, to expand knowledges of, you know, applying for, I mean, I'd say the best thing to do is to keep updated what the firms are currently offering, follow them on social media. There is so much information, there's almost student overload out there. Firms like um, the brands like Legal Cheek, Law Careers Net, Chambers Prospects, they're all offering online experiences, webinars, Q and A's, um, you know, like today, the volunteer, there's so much. It's a great way to keep in the loop with what is going on and brushing up your knowledge about certain firms when you're going to be applying for them. It's a really good time to get as much information as you can about the firms. Um, I always feel like uh, commercial, I think we call that commercial awareness, commercial knowledge, um, Radio 4, everybody laughs at me, trainees love me. It's really free, it's free and it's good. It's lots of current affairs. Um, and I just think it's a really good way to know what's going on in the market. Um, reading business sections and newspapers on a daily basis. You can do it all online. You know, you know the latest deal disputes occurring across the world, well, latest government policies that are being implemented, um, the editorials, you can help you formulate opinions on the latest commercial affairs taking place. You know, it's I would say find aspects of the business world that interest you. Follow a market or sector by reading publications, listening to the radio. Um, it all helps and it does actually, it, it's all knowledge that you're taking in and you mentally don't realise how much knowledge you are taking in. Um, I mean, I like joining business societies or enterprising entrepreneurial societies, you can gain access to firm presentation, company workshops. Um, you know, they all help to develop the commercial mindset and they match sort of client expectations. So there's a lot of, there's a lot to do if you've got the time and it's just like endless really, all the initiatives out there. So I think just get involved and soak up as much as you can. Great, thank you very much. <laughs> final, um, I suppose, I'd say final question on what's going on at the moment, um, and Tara, I'm going to come back to you for this one. Is um, we, we you've, I think you've probably answered some of this already, but um, someone asks, how has the current pandemic impacted Trevor Smith, and how um, has the firm changed its operations to cope with the recent changes? Yeah, I, I suppose this is the question that everyone wants to know about, about every every business, really. Um, we're lucky enough to be one of the firms that has prepared for something like this, as in we will have the capability to work from home. And that's so important right now. Um, as I said earlier, the teams are all communicating. So working as normal, really, um, apart from being at home, that's the only thing that's different, really. Um, communicating via Skype, phone, email, um, keeping in touch as much as possible through doing sort of there are departmental quizzes going on, Zoom drinks, there's a virtual kitchen, um, WhatsApp chats for groups um, of trainees. It's really anything that you guys are doing with your mates and your family that's what we're doing just to keep in touch with our colleagues and um the best way to keep work going as normal and to keep the operations flowing is just to make sure that we're all in contact um as we would normally be physically and obviously we're not so yeah um it's going okay at the moment and it's all about communication really and so i think sorry i think we both agree. I don't think in our, nothing's actually really changed apart from we're not in the office. We're still as busy as we normally are. And I think that's the same with trainees and like the associates as well. The work and meetings and everything else seems to be going. We're just not doing it at the office. We're just doing it on our dining room tables and stuff. But Yeah, um, yeah exactly. Uh, it's about replacing that physical um, impression that we always have seeing each other with something virtual. Yeah. It's it's unusual, but maybe this is the way I didn't re I've been completely being a complete technophobe. I didn't even realise about Zoom and hop in and or oh, I don't even really use Skype business before this. So it's it's a whole new world as well, and it does make you wonder what the future will be really, because that flexibility to work from home it's worked really well. Um, obviously, it doesn't replace being with your colleagues, but firm has been brilliant and it does feel like we're almost in the office doesn't it Tara? Yeah definitely 
definitely. Great, thank you. I had a question about what a virtual kitchen was, but that was purely me. So I will follow up with you both. After that. <laughs> oh, we um, both everything. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to, um, I'd say the most common question I had was around cover letters, because <laughs> um, firms that ask for cover letter, and I've been asked this a lot recently on um, the Vantage webinars we've done before this, and I'm not a cover letter person, never having had to, um, screen them. So let's move on um, to kind of the more sort of application focused questions. So the first one then is, which I think a lot of students um, are waiting to hear, is what makes a good cover letter? Um, Tara, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, of course. So um, firstly, what I would say is that different firms will have different preferences about what they want to see in their applications so definitely follow specific advice from the specific graduate recruitment teams on structure and do's and don'ts um, and that sort of also highlights that you shouldn't be um, writing one application and submitting it to all different firms you need to be specific to each firm um, definitely so for example we what we like to see is we like to know in your cover letter why law so why you're choosing law um, and also why why us why Travis Smith um, which can include a whole myriad of things um, and in addition to this sort of including all of that as well is more about yourself we love to see personality um, in your cover letter you know humor is really good but remember it is subjective so don't go overboard maybe err on the side of caution um, what you should try and remember when you're writing a cover letter is that there is a team of three of us at Travis Smith reading these applications and there are hundreds of them. So, you know, <laughs> just think about us reading lots of them and, and try not to do go on a board with things. So for us, quoting lots of deals, it, it can get very boring and doesn't actually reflect, you know, your intellect and, and your personality, really. It's just what's on the website so try and avoid that obviously if there are deals that have inspired you then that's fantastic definitely mention it but if you're just sort of name dropping these deals then that that's not useful for us at all um, another thing is spelling names wrong it's really really easy to get these names right everything's on the website so please don't spell names wrong um, you know that that's a real no-no for us um, as well as this, focusing purely on one th thing throughout the whole application can get a bit tedious to read. So make sure you're, you know, talking about lots of different aspects of, you know, your personality and your experiences. Great, thank you. Can I me something on that as well? Um, so is that okay? Just having yeah, a cover list. Um, it's okay, Alison, just something quick. Um, you if you're putting deals on the cover letter, that is great, but just also be careful that you've put them down for the right reason because the interviewers do read the cover letter. So if you quoted that you're interested in a particular deal, they might ask you about it, that so you want to be knowledgeable. So be careful about what you put in your cover letter because it is something that the interviewers might pick up. So you do want to be able to answer why. So you see quite a lot of candidates will come to fall down on that because they've just quoted it for quoting. Um, and then when they're asked about it, they don't have that knowledge when it comes to the interview. Um, yeah, that's just a bit of a tip. Um, and also, Great. actually, we had uh, Tara was talking about humour and personality. There was um, one of our current trainees, actually. She put her opening um, paragraph was... Um, I'll read it. I, I had a quote because I just thought it's quite a good quote. It's um, I cannot honestly say that being since being a child, I've dreamed of being a commercial lawyer. My five-year-old self has firmly decided upon growing up to be a giraffe. But what can I say? Is that my ambition, skills, and interests have pointed me down a clear path, which is to pursue a career in this field. It was just something humorous but subtle, and um, it just made her application stand out. So that's what we're looking for. Sorry, <laughs> um, someone's come in sort of immediately with a question which I thought was probably worth seizing on um, now because it's about covering letters and it's about how kind of how do you tailor your covering letter to different firms kind of how do you distinguish the different firms um, and I'm going to hand over to um, Tara I don't know if you want to pick up on that sort of you know and that's going away from your which I completely agree with as a former graduate reader is not having this standard cover letter where you um you know change the name of the firm but how would you 
how would you advise students tailor it to the firm that they're actually applying to? So like I say, um, it, it's all about what we like to see in there. So other law firms, I mean, probably also want to see why law and why them, but there's other things that they do like. So I know that there's a specific firm that actually loves it when you quote deals, um, which is the complete opposite of what we like. So I would say that it's, you know, don't be afraid to call up the graduate recruitment team or email us and say, what is it that you're looking for? Um, because more often than not, you know, they're going to reply and, and tell you because it's it's probably quite simple and straightforward. Um, and in addition to that, it's like Jermaine was saying, doing your research and knowing about the firm because, you know, there are going to be things that jump out at you when you do research about firms that appeals to you, um, whether that's sort of, you know, what we do in CSR or what the seating plan's like, or there, there are so many things across the training contract and across, you know, what the firm does in general that will jump out at you specifically. So try and pull out the things that appeal to you. Um, and like I say, don't be afraid to talk to the graduate recruitment team because they can give you um, a more in-depth um, knowledge about, about what they're looking for. Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, obviously, you've talked about sort of not mentioning deals, but um, one of the questions that we had submitted was whether you should mention um, clients or a particular kind of sector or practice area of the firm, or you know, should you mention people that you you've already met, maybe on campus, you know, from the firm? Um, Jermaine, I wonder if you could, if you wanted to pick that that one up. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I think if it's relevant, it um, again, it shows you've been proactive, you've done your research on the firm, but if you're doing it, make sure you do it for the right reason. Um, and it's um, if you're mentioning about clients, make sure it's not just like, it's about your own interest, it's about your own knowledge, it's about your research, so it has to be relevant to why you've why you've put that in your cover letter not just because it's random but definitely and it's always good to mention people you've met at law fairs or you've met at um, the presentation we get that a lot and we you know actually we did remember you so absolutely it shows you've been proactive it shows you've um, had an interest in the firm so definitely mention them down but again just be careful about how you mention it and um, in what context you mention it Okay, great. No, that, that makes sense. Um, okay, Tara, the question I'm asked all the time: um, How long should the cover? <laughs> well, I'm how long should the cover letter be, Tara? Yeah. <laughs> how, long, how long is a piece of string, <laughs> really? Um, truthfully, it should be as long as you'd like it to be. Um, include everything that you think is important, but make it concise. Concise is just the main word here there is nothing worse than a waffly cover letter unless the detail is relevant um you know which is what we've said before if it's not relevant why are you putting it in there your your cover letter should be marketing yourself um and if it's not relevant then it's not doing that job um also remember like Jermaine's just said that anything you put in a cover letter will be drawn upon in an interview or might be drawn upon in an interview so make sure that the stuff that you put in there is is true and it's also something that you can expand upon if you're asked about it yeah absolutely um okay what are common mistakes students make on the cover letter which i'm sure um mm -hmm. are going to be common mistakes that students make on application forms so this is going to apply to you know all application <laughs> process but jermaine what having you know spent years and years reading cover letters what are common mistakes that students I yeah, I think the biggest is the lack of attention to detail. Um, I think it's it's students always really surprised when I say this, but there's spelling errors. I mean, getting the firm name wrong, we get um, people putting Herbert Smith on ours. Um, it's a it's very common, and it's just about sometimes it is just about the rush at the end. But I would say you know. So people will say writing about they'll apply for a bank scheme when they're actually applying for a training contract. So I think it's all about attention to detail. Um, I think if you've met someone at a firm, and as we said in the previous question, if you're going to write about them in your cover letter, make sure you've got their name correct. We had a person who put on a cover letter recently, Tara, I think, didn't we? That met a partner and put in their cover letter, which is about four paragraphs, spelt that partner's name in three different ways. 
Um, and it's just so like you can sometimes you allow the sort of first um error, but then when you see it three different times, it's like you've just spelled that three times wrong. Um, so I would say it's really about the attention to detail. Um, yeah. and also it's about and grammar is so important. Being a lawyer, it's like attention to detail, grammar is so important. Um, and you know, I've had letters that have been written in like text speak and you know, you just want to, um, it's a big, it's a big thing that we pick up on the grammar and like attention to detail. So it's vital that, you know, get someone to proofread it, check it again, check it. You, you can't over check it and don't rush it. I think we see quite a lot of um, applications that come in on the deadline because people are obviously sending about 20 out and that's when a lot of the attention to detail goes to part of it. So I think, you know, you just, if you're proofreading, you're mail merging, just get someone else's extra pair of eyes, check, 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 and allow yourself enough time to do each application. Yeah, you know, they are time consuming, but it's so vital you get it right. It's, I always say it's a marketing tool, so you need to sell yourself the best way you can. Yeah, that's it. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so Tara, the other question I'm asked all the time, as I'm sure you are, and I have been asked for years and years, is what should a CV include? Mm -hmm. So, so for us, um, when you're doing your application, we ask for a cover letter and a CV. And for us, um, the CV section of our application is all about work experience. So again, we might sound like a broken record. It's all about your personality and the experience that you've had. So this work ex experience should be anything that you've done, whether it's a vacation scheme that's fantastic or working at, for the, your university. Um, lots of people, you know, have done touring of universities or um, working in the pub down the road, working in a call centre, working in the Sainsbury's, um, your local Sainsbury's, you know, any type of work experience um, is valuable and how you've learned from it, you know, all of these types of work experience are a great way to show that you can work with people in a team and that you aren't afraid of hard work. Um, so don't be afraid to include things that you might not think are valuable, but, but really are. Okay, great. I'm conscious of the time and we still have quite a lot of questions. So I'm going to move straight on um, into um, the kind of Travis Smith, um, I'd say more Travis Smith focused questions that we had sent in. Um, and the first one, which I think you possibly already both alluded to, is um, what do you look for in training contract applications? Like kind of maybe what three qualities do you look for in future um, trainee selectors? Jermaine. So I try to talk quite quickly actually as we're running out of time. Um, I think like obviously like you mentioned, we've highlighted the good cover letters and, and like the grammar and the spelling, which is sort of key. But the qualities that we're looking for in future trainees, I mean, it's a lot more than free. It's hard to put your finger on it, but I'd say off the top of my head, we're looking for people who can teams is vital, who can teamwork, someone with good interpersonal skills. A lot of the work we do is done in small teams or big teams. It's very team focused. So teamwork is huge. We're also looking for um, trainees who've got ambition and drive. You've got to want to do it. Um, you know, I know it sounds a bit crazy, but when I'm in the hairdressers, a lot of the Saturday girls are saying they want to be lawyers because it's just about the money. It has to be more than about the money. You have to have a passion for it. It's a hard, you know, it's long hours, it's hard, but it's very rewarding. So you need that drive and you need that ambition. The rewards are there if you've got that. Um, and also we want people who can use their initiative, common sense, find practical solutions to the problem. And I know this isn't free, but we do want people who've got a sense of humour. This all comes back to the teamwork. So basically people who take their work seriously, but not themselves. Okay, lovely. Well, Thank you very much. much. Okay, Tara, um, I suspect this information is on your website, but someone asked, what's the interview process for a vacation scheme and um, a training contract, if they're, if they're different? I don't, I don't know if they're different. Um, yeah, over to you. So yeah, um, so the application process is the same for both, um, as is the interview process. The only difference is that after the first interview, you'll either be put through to a vacation scheme or um, you'll be put through to a second training contract interview, depending on which stream you're in. 
Um, the interviews are the same, so a one-on-one -on -one interview with a partner on a graduate recruitment panel. They will ask you a series of questions and they're really looking to have a discussion with you. There isn't really any right or wrong answers, you just need to demonstrate how you think and that you have that capability to think on your feet. Um, the second training contract interview is with our two heads of graduate recruitment um, and will just be more in depth and more challenging than the first. Partners also do understand that you'll be nervous. Um, they genuinely, they're all really lovely, normal people. You know, I think people forget that about partners. They're, you know, they're seen as these amazing heads of the firm who are really, you know, daunting and scary, but they're actually all really lovely and they want you genuinely to do the best you possibly can. So try and put your nerves to one side and perform the best you can is really the best advice we can give. So yeah, hopefully that, that answers that question. Thank you. Um, okay. Jermaine, next yeah. question is, uh, should you apply for the winter vacation scheme or straight for a training contract if you've been unsuccessful in applying for a summer vacation scheme? And I'm assuming this is someone who kind of maybe applied, tried for the summer vacation scheme this year. So should they wait for the winter scheme or should they go for a training contract? Okay, I mean, basically, we've told a few students as well, it's like, it's not really that they were unsuccessful, we were inundated with applications for the summer scheme this year, so we had well over a thousand for 54 places, so um, if that was the case, I mean, it depends on specific situations and why um, she would have wanted to apply to the summer scheme, I mean, some people would like to sort of get the full experience of a firm without virus scheme before applying for a training contract, whereas others are happy to attend the presentation even and apply directly to the training contract. It depends on your own sort of requirements, but um, those are, sometimes we get people that have completed vacation schemes elsewhere and they feel they had the experience to apply directly. So it really is your own personal preference. Um, yeah, absolutely fine to apply for a winter scheme. The only thing I'd say is, it is the next recruiting year, so um, it depends again, that's on your personal preference, but absolutely, if, that's, if you want that insight into the firm and you want to wait to do a skid, then I'd say definitely. Okay, um, thank you. And then along, yeah, no, that's great. Um, along a similar line, I think this is answering something, asking something different, but I'm not sure. So if, if a student applies for a training contract this summer, but isn't successful, are they still eligible to apply for the winter vacation scheme in like next year, next academic year? I think yeah. that's a different question. Yeah. 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 Tara, yeah. I don't know if you want to pick that one up. If it makes yeah, so uh, it's a slightly, well, similar question, but slightly different, but basically, um, short answer, you can. So you can apply as many times as you like to our schemes, to our training contracts, um, the only rule we have basically is that we don't re-interview so you can apply um, to whichever ones you like and as long as yeah until you get an interview you won't be turned away again so it's that simple okay great um but if you have if you have an interview and you're not successful then you yeah. you are ask candidates not to apply again is that right yeah just so yeah we 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 have so many people apply that you you know you've yeah. got to give everyone a chance so if we give if we have given you the chance of an interview it's sort of unfair to give you another chance when there are so many other people looking so that's how we view it great thank you that is a really good question whoever submitted it because it's it will be different for every single firm um mm. so that's a really good question i would say sorry putting in here's not my webinar um no, just to, no, like no, it's no, good, Alison. Alison, a really you're good right. A really good, good question on law fairs, um, because every firm has a very different policy. You know, one some have a one strike, some mm -hmm. you know have a you can apply. So yeah, it's a really good question to ask firms. Um, okay, and next question about A levels, which again comes up all the time, um, is if you don't, and I'm going to kind of rephrase this because the number of questions have also come through while we've been doing the webinar. If you don't have your A level requirement, um, you know, does this affect your chances of, you know, getting through to an assessment day? Or, you know, do you have sort of quite a strict cutoff with your A level grades? If you're missing it by one grade, for example, you know, is 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 that is that an issue or a problem? Shall I answer that, Tara? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Great. 
Great. Okay. Um, obviously, A levels are our exam, but absolutely, it's not a, our requirements are not a complete cut off if you don't hit the minimum requirement. We basically look at the application as a whole. Um, so, if you had mitigating circumstances, for example, and you showed academic intellect for your uni grades, then we overlook the A levels. Um, we also use the rare contextual tool. So um, that helps. Well, I don't know if students are familiar with that, but obviously that's on the Rare website, but that has all revolutionised the way we work because we can see candidates and um, potential from using the tool. So we've got a lot of people haven't got the A-level uh, minimum, but we have seen it with university grades come through. So absolutely, we do um, look at the application as a whole. So if you haven't got the AAB, is some um, we still look at your application great thank you oh, i think that's what, i think that's what that student wanted to hear um Good. so next question um tara so this is quite specific but i've also had um a number of students ask this during the webinar is according to the website travis smith will only be reviewing applications after august kind of can you sort of elaborate a bit on what that means and also whether you are still recruiting applications on a rolling basis yeah even so, though you're not yeah so because of the current predicament that we're in we can't conduct any training contract interviews um as we like to do them in person the second one specifically um and on top of that we also need to wait until after our summer vacation schemes to know exactly how many training contract places for 2022 we have available um, so after the summer schemes have finished we'll know how many interviews we can do um, or sorry how many places we'll have so then we know roughly how many interviews we need to do um, so then we can contact applicants to come in for the interview this is why we've said that we won't be in contact until August um, we will be reviewing applications up until then obviously as I said before we have so many applications and only three of us to go through them and we do endeavour to read all applications so what we'll be we'll be doing between now and august is reading all those applications so that when we get to the point of being able to offer interviews we know who we're offering interviews to so it is worth applying um and we'll keep you updated on what's going on with the the situation in terms of how many spaces we have um but we will only be in contact probably in august about this okay great perfect um just one little follow-up question um that's come through is how kind of far in advance should students submit an application before the deadline and i know that's impossible <laughs> it's probably really hard to answer but a student so, just asking kind of when when they should submit it yeah i mean as we're sort of reviewing them over the next few months before august obviously we're more likely to look at your application if you have submitted it earlier and I would say as well that this is the absolute perfect time to be doing your cover letter and your yeah. application um use this time that you've got and actually you know just send it off a lots of people I know sit on their cover letters and their applications and you know you're probably only going to tweak it and not really change very much if you've got it done in the next month you're not going to change that much um until the deadline so I would just say send it off when when it's done and as soon as you can really um you can wait until the end of the um i think it's the end of july but um i, d I don't really see the point in that um if you've got now to to do the cover letter but you know it's up to you if you want to wait till then that's absolutely fine um but yeah we are reviewing them now as well so we might end up great. looking at your if you submit them in the next few days great thank you um okay sort of two more questions specifically about um, your application process. So firstly, do those who complete a vacation scheme with you get fast tracked for a training contract interview? Um, I'm going to come to Jermaine for that one. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Well, it's not so much as a um, fast track, but basically everyone um, who's been on a vacation scheme, we do ask them to apply again, mainly because they've got final year grades, some people, we wouldn't presume that everyone who's been on a scheme would want to be work at the firm. Some people aren't are doing a scheme to see whether law is for them. So basically, everyone will reapply at the end. It's just a formality 
we then look at all the grades, process the applications, obviously a scheme, on the scheme you're being assessed and obviously we're aware we're being assessed by students too. So at the end of the scheme, all students do reapply and we then um, collate all our feedback and decide um, some students will be offered a training contract straight away on their performance on the scheme. Some people we might think aren't suitable and others, if we haven't seen enough of a student, um, we would ask them to come in for a second interview. Um, okay. Yeah. Great, thank you. Okay, and then final, actually there's one more, two more questions. Um, Tara, uh, we've already answered this. This is one asking again about A-level requirements, but also about if the firm kind of has hired students, um, either who haven't, you know, met the minimum A-level requirement um, and also haven't attended a Russell Group University. Yeah, so as we mentioned earlier, we don't rely solely on A-level grades. Plenty of our trainees and future trainees um, and students that have got onto vacation schemes, um, you know, didn't get their A-level grades or didn't attend Russell Group Universities. Um, just a couple of examples. We've got trainees currently who have went to the University of Buckingham, the University of Sussex. We have an NQ who went to the University of Westminster. And we have VAC scheme students from the University of Greenwich, um, UAE. So yeah, a real spread. Great, thank you. And then just one question that's come through, which I think is um, a good one, is a student asking when is the right time to mention a disability in the kind of, um, you know, in your application process? Is it um, something to bring up on the cover letter? Is it something they would bring up if, if they got an interview? When is, when is the right time? We would probably say to put that in your application, um, unless you're uncomfortable with telling us um, on the application, you, you know, you don't have to, it sort of depends on, on how you feel about it. But, you know, if you can disclose everything to us on the application, that's fantastic, because like Jermaine said, we, we take your application in as a whole. So um, we don't read bits and then, you know, sort of score it and that's type of thing. We, we put it all together as a whole. So um, anything extra that you can tell us. Um, whenever you want to really. Some people mention things like that in their cover letters, some people don't. There are questions um, in the application where you can answer things like that as well. So, um, okay, okay. But Tara said, we just, I, was, I had someone actually call the other day and it, they were just asking, they'd rather just wanted to just speak to me about it. And um, we will do what we have, we can to help. But you don't have to feel, you just, if you don't want to put it in your cover letter and you'd rather some, some people prefer to just send an email beforehand. It's what makes candidates comfortable um, and we're happy to be, we can just work with the candidates on that. Okay, great. Um, all right, a few more, a few sort of more general um, application questions now. Um, firstly, um, Jermaine, I wonder if you could answer the question about what would make a career change a standout sort of maybe from those with a law background um, during your recruitment process? A really interesting question, actually. Um, basically, um, your experiences, um, if you had a career previously, um, this will most probably help answer a lot of the questions, the commercial questions, why law, why Travis Smith? Um, it's a different way to those who have studied law and come straight from university. It's not to say it's best, one's better than the other, it's just your own experience that shapes you into your own individual personality and it's what makes you stand out from the others um, and there's also we keep we talk about it a lot but there's a lot of transferable skills um, and we really don't have a preference um, for a lot of secondary careers joining us so we do have teachers we've had um, we've got a trainee who just qualified on a career in marketing um, army um, we've had oh, we've had a fashion writer people have worked in PR, so we've had, yeah, we do have a lot of second careers, it's not uncommon. Thank you. Um, okay, Tara, again, a very common question that I was asked every single law fair I ever went to <laughs> is, um, what makes an application stand out? Um, <laughs> like what, what can candidates do to kind of ensure their application stands out, particularly, you know, as you're getting thousands of, of, of applications? Yeah, so again, personality, personality, personality. Like Jermaine said, we're looking for people who, um, you know, don't take themselves too seriously, but also take their work seriously. So, you know, personality is everything. Um, showing that you do more than just 
sitting in the library applying to law firms who want to know about I don't know your passion for your dog or for old movies or karate you know your experiences and passions will help you stand out um, because no one else will have the exact same combination of experiences and passions um, in addition to this a well-written sort of cohesive cover letter um, being able to put your personality into the cover letter not repeating the same thing in the cover letter and the questions we do have we have had experiences of people who have sort of copied and pasted a couple of sentences or a paragraph from the cover letter into the questions we're really looking for it the questions to be an extension of your cover letter perfect that's what i'm going to say now that's my that's going to be my standard <laughs> we love that question okay. <laughs> what should um candidates research or know about a firm before before applying um jermaine do you want to take that one yeah, sure. I mean, basically, uh, you want to demonstrate why you apply to the firm. Um, you, you know, you want to know as much as possible um, the type of work the firm does, the scope of the department, the CSR work. Um, I would say check the website for recent deals. Um, again, look at the sort of knowledge can be topped up by attending the events we put on, presentations, experience days the evenings that we do, you know, Legal Cheek. So I would say, again, there is a lot of information out there. Um, I would just use as much as you can to know about the firms that you're applying. Um, you know, research the structure of a firm. It helps you able to learn about the practices of a firm. Um, so I would say just go onto the website and learn as much as you can. OK. Great, thank you. Um, and then last question um, on the sort of general applications is, what is the best way to gain commercial law experience? Um, Tara, do you want to take that one? Yeah, so I think we've sort of, um, we've gone over the background of this a little bit, but you know, there is no best way, I would say, to, to gain commercial law experience. We are, like Jermaine said, looking at people with lots of different types of experience anyway. So if you don't have commercial law experience, that is fine. You will have other types of experiences. That's OK. Um, our trainees will have gained commercial experience through a variety of different channels. So things we've said already, really. So attending events, being on committees at university, being parts of societies at university, um, work experience to, during your holidays, work experience from pre previous careers, um, you know, anything that you do can be can be turned around into some sort of commercial experience anyway in the sort of commercial law side of that um if you're doing the research that that Jermaine just mentioned that will sort of um you know you can highlight that through your your work experiences and and hopefully um you know that way rather than any specific commercial law experiences Great, thank you. Okay, final um, two questions. Um, so these are kind of questions that were asked quite a lot actually and have been during the webinar about the firm. So the first one is um, around diversity. So diversity has become a buzzword um, within the legal sector, this isn't right. So what's the firm's approach um, to ensuring its values are reflected within your recruitment? So basically, um, you know, creating a diverse and inclusive culture is a key priority for us. We've got um, a CSR director we appointed um, and it's, it's, it's the right thing to do. It's integral to how we serve clients, develop our people, play leadership roles in our communities. Um, it goes without saying that the highest performing teams, which maximise the power of different opinions, perspectives, cultural, cultural references, are the ones that succeed in the marketplace. It's about um, our approach to diversity and creating an inclusive workplace goes beyond just ticking a box. We want everyone to be themselves at Travis Smith. Uh, we value everything that makes us unique and we recognise and that celebrating difference will help make the firm a special place to work. Um, it, you know, diversity is more than how we look. It's about how we think, our experiences, our views and our values. Um, and we do 
you know, we really do believe that true inclusion can only be achieved if we look at diversity in a broader, more holistic way. It has to break down silos, recognise the multiple identities we each carry. Um, we have initiatives that aim at reducing biases, tackling microaggressions. We have um, wide We have a lot of exciting work which goes on on our diversity network groups. We have an extensive DNI program created at the workplace where people thrive, reach their full potential. We have five um, professional net networks which are led by partners, um, and this provides high-level um, strategic input and support. Um, five groups are gender balance. Oh, here we go. Um, gender balance group. We have we have the LGBT plus group. We have our um, Black Asian minority ethnic group, uh, faith resources group, and our disability group. Um, and everyone across the firm is welcome to join all of those uh, groups um, as um, and allies as well. So it, they are, it's huge for us. Um, we've also very excitingly appointed our first pro bono director. Um, so we've as mentioned, we've had our CSR director for many years. So we were looking at the sort of next stage of development using pro bono. Um, and there will be quite a lot about Sam coming up. Um, so he was a senior counsel litigator and it's gonna help us have a sort of, having a committed person will reinforce the values and professionalise it and he's um, hoping to come up with more strategic ideas for example we're looking at sustainability and actually Tara we need to work on this because each department has been asked to come up with a sustainability initiative so it's something us the three of us in graduate recruitment have uh, got to come up with we were talking about it before we went on lockdown weren't we Tara we still need to think about something so basically these are the values of the firm so we do feel if we have these values and, and you have them, they work for everyone. But a lot of our CSR and diversity initiatives are on the website and um, there's a lot on the Instagram page as well. So again, I could talk for hours about this, but um, yeah, obviously realizing time is running out. So yeah. yeah, I hope that helps a bit and a little bit of an overview. That was great. Thank you very much. So final um, question, and thank you very much for all of you who are sticking with us. We've probably got um, maximum five minutes more. Um, so mm -hmm. what's the social life like at Travis? <laughs> and this was asked quite a lot. Um, so clearly oh. it's important. Um, so Tara, do you want to take that final question? Yes, definitely. So as many of you might know, if you follow us okay. on Instagram, we want best social life um, at the Legal Cheek Awards 2020. <laughs> I think we're entitled to say it's amazing. Um, no, we're so happy. The trainees socialise together um, and have already spent some time together before joining, as many will have become friends sort of on the GDL, LPC. So, in addition um, to this, we host an annual trainee event with all current and future trainees invited. So, you get to meet your peers before you even start your training contract. Um, you know, away from this rooms socialize together departments go away on away days and ski trips there are sports teams that play once a week there's a choir tons of initiatives to get involved with including diversity and csr initiatives that jermaine's just mentioned um, there are so many ways to meet people across the firm and you end up doing lots with people that you work with closely um, one very interesting one is the cook-off that they do once a year so departments um, go in teams go head to head and we get to work in our kitchen one evening creating a three-course meal with your team um, and then you eat that together and you see who won and last year the HR grab recruitment team won so very pleased with that if you want to see more about that I would just going to quickly plug the Travis Smith kitchen Instagram they're amazing oh, yeah. they post loads of stuff um, so definitely follow them um, in addition to that, follow us on Instagram, Travis Smith Graduates. Um, we like to show what our trainees are getting up to, you know, uh, you know, that's just showing the social life in general. Um, and also we do sometimes do training takeovers so you can hear directly from them. Um, and yeah, I think I think that's sort of it about the social life. I would also quickly um, say, you know, all the general things we've talked about following us and, and going on the website and stuff. We do also have a LinkedIn, a general Travis Smith LinkedIn, which is fantastic for um, 
knowing what's going on with deals and we have a Twitter account as well. So follow us on all of them if you're interested. Great, thank you. Um, I think that's all that we have time for on the questions. I know um, a number of you have um, submitted quite a lot of questions um, during the webinar. So um, apologies that we haven't been able to answer those. Um, but if you do, if you've asked something um, during the webinar, we haven't been able to answer, you can, um, two ways of following up. So you can follow up um, as both Jermaine and Tara said with um, Travis Smith directly. So you can follow them um, on their social media accounts um, and you can also email them. Um, and I'll also send a follow up email um, with all of these details in them. Um, and final point is um, obviously if you haven't already done so is to um, register and to um, submit a profile on Vantage. So Vantage is another great way that you can connect directly with Travis Smith and find out um, about their opportunities and also the opportunities of the our other partner firms that work with us through Vantage. So again, I will send you um, some information um, about how you can do that if you haven't already um, done so. Otherwise, all I really wanted to say was thank you very, very much um, to Jermaine and Tara for joining me um, on this webinar this morning. Thank you also to um, all of you who've listened in, um, submitted questions in advance and also been engaged um, during um, the webinar. But otherwise, thank you very, very much for listening. Thank you, Jermaine. Yeah, thank you for asking, no, for asking um, organising it and for all the interesting questions as well. They've been great. Thank you. So yeah, I'll follow up with you um, later and I'll, I'll include all of the contact details um, for Travis Smith. Um, otherwise, um, stay safe, seems to be the thing everyone says at the moment, um, and please do follow up with any of us if you have any questions. Thanks very Thanks much. Thanks very much, Alison. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.